As with many hobbies, painting miniatures for tabletop gaming can be extremely affordable. You can buy some really cheap stuff that will do the job, or you can spend about five times more and get some pretty expensive stuff that will be better. The big question, of course, is it worth it? In today's video, I'll be going over some of the basic components and tools for painting miniatures. I'll be showing you some really cheap hacks that I think you're really gonna like, but on the other hand, I'll also be talking about some things I do think that are worth spending a bit more money on. Hi everybody, my name is Nate and you are watching WASD20, a channel about tabletop RPGs and fantasy maps. Today's video is sponsored by Hero Forge, an amazing tool for creating custom 3D printed miniatures. But get this, they just launched a Kickstarter that is a major game changer. The first fully customizable 3D printed miniatures in full color. That's right, through some killer new technology, they can now print miniatures in a way that colors the material as it is printing. And they'll also have options for having your custom miniature professionally hand painted. Backers of their Kickstarter will have early access to these color design tools and will be the first to actually order and receive color printed or hand painted miniatures as they are rolled out over the course of 2020. So check out that Kickstarter link down in the video description. It really does look amazing. Now, before we get down to my painting table and take a look at some of these components and tools, I just wanna say that a lot of what I say here is going to be different for you based on your financial situation. I happen to have quite a bit of money to spend on my hobby now that my hobby is actually making money, but I do remember a time when my wife and I decided we get something like 20 or $30 a month to spend on our hobbies. And if I already bought that game on the Steam sale for $15, then I really only have a few dollars left to spend on these miniatures or this paint. So I understand tight budgets, and again, just know that a lot of this is gonna vary based on your financial situation. Also in this video, I'm gonna be talking mostly about painting tools, not about various miniature brands. So that's probably another great topic for another video someday. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at paint. All right, so here we are at my little painting station. I'll uh, zoom out and give you guys a broader look here. Hey, how's it going? And we are gonna start off by talking about different types of paint. Is it worth it buying this more expensive paint that is designed for painting miniatures or going with the cheaper paint, this kind of general what we would call craft paint? So for miniature paint, I've got a few different brands here. I've got uh, Privateer Press P3. I've got some Reaper paints here. I've got some Vallejo model color and game color and I do have some Citadel paints as well. So these are all paints that are specifically designed for painting miniatures. There are several other brands as well. On the craft paint side, I've got some folk art, I've got some apple barrel, I've got some craft essentials, and I've got Delta Creative here. So you'll know craft paint because it's generally gonna be somewhere in the one to two dollar range for a bottle. They generally come in bottles shaped like this that you can get at all kinds of stores. You can get them at like Walmart, you can get them at uh, Joanne Fabrics or Hobby Lobby or any place like that. Even dollar stores sometimes carry this stuff. For a much smaller bottle of Vallejo paint, which is usually my preferred paint, it is going to cost about three to 350. And this stuff here you can usually get for about a dollar for a much bigger bottle. But the reality is when it comes to quantity, a bottle of Vallejo paint is going to give me plenty. It's gonna last me several years. My point is I don't need this much paint. This is plenty. So the difference in quantity is a non-issue for me. I do go through a lot of paint when I'm doing terrain crafting and that's why I use craft paint for that. Uh, it works really well for that sort of thing. But for miniatures, I definitely do use paint that is specifically designed for painting miniatures. Now the quality is really going to vary based on the color, based on the brand and things like that. But in general, I've just found this stuff a lot more consistent. It doesn't need to be watered down so much. The uh, consistency is just a lot easier to work with right out of the bottle, less goopy, and you are generally going to be getting a higher pigment density when you're dealing with these paints that are designed specifically for painting miniatures. That means you'll probably have to do less coats and you're just gonna end up fighting with the paint a lot less. 
So you can get away with this stuff, definitely. And if you're on a tight budget, going to the store and picking up 10 bottles of this for 10 bucks is a great way to get started in the hobby, especially if you're just trying to dip your toes in and see if you really like it. Once you know that you're in, I do think it is worth it to buy like a multi-pack, for example, of Vallejo paint. I'll put a couple links to some of these down in the video description. That is what I generally recommend for newcomers, buying one of these big old 30 or $40 multi-packs that's going to come with a wide array of Vallejo paints to get you started. You could go with Reaper or Army Painter or P3 or Citadel. Personally, I like the squeeze bottles and I've just found a good consistent quality in general for Vallejo paints. Now I actually did test some here and you can see that this top one is the folk art craft paint and the bottom one here is Vallejo paint and I definitely got much better coverage from a single coat of the Vallejo. Uh, this one was just kind of not staying where I wanted it to. I can see a lot more gray through onto this uh, pre-primed miniature here. So definitely happier with how the Vallejo paint was shaping up there. They are slightly different colors, so take that in consideration. So you do actually see some quite skilled painters out there who use craft paint, and you can get really good results from it. But in general, I find that this stuff is just easier to work with, and I think it's worth the extra money. Next, one of the basic pieces of equipment is obviously the paint brush. So let's talk about these. On the left side here, I've got an assortment of very cheap brushes. This big pack of like orangish ones here, you know, I've probably got just a big pack of 10 brushes for $5 or something like that at a craft store. And then, you know, moving up from those, you do have these. These are army painter brushes, and these ones are actually designed for miniature painting. And I don't remember exactly how much they were. I'm guessing they were like four or five bucks each. And then moving up from there, we do get into these Sable Kalinsky brushes. Now, to be honest, this is probably one of my areas of less expertise. So if you have good recommendations for miniature painting brushes, I would love to hear your opinion down in the comments. Uh, but I have bought these very expensive Sable Kalinsky brushes. I have some Rosemary and Company Series 33 brushes. And I also have some of these Windsor and Newton Series 7 brushes. Now, the nice thing about these is that they are made from this natural sable hair. They really retain their shape very well, and they come to a nice, natural, fine point, uh, which is a real advantage. Now, my Rosemary & Company number one here is pretty worn out, but it lasted me three years. So this one's not keeping its shape so well anymore. Uh, but I just got upgraded to these uh, Windsor & Newton Series 7. I think this brush was probably about mm, 17 bucks. And uh, yeah, so it's not cheap for a single brush. But my hope is this will last me a couple years. This one's a size 1. I actually kind of wish I had a size 2 or 3 as well. Uh, but I just have a 1 and I think a 0 here. So let's talk about my recommendations here. Personally, I think that when you're first getting started, you don't necessarily need to go for the you know, 15 to $20 a piece brushes. You can find some pretty good brushes, probably like these Army Painters, that might be more like $5. And I think they're a good starting place. Uh, I got some good use out of these for sure. But the reality is you're also gonna want a big pack of cheap brushes, just kind of a variety here. Um, for example, I use this one for applying finish, clear finish to my miniatures afterwards. Sometimes I'll use it for base coating too. If I just want to prime the whole miniature in black, this is just a cheap brush that I'm sure was about 50 cents. And then of course you want some brushes that are good for dry brushing because you're just going to be smushing those things around and you don't want to use an expensive brush for that. So it's good to have some cheap brushes, but for most of your detailed work, you're probably gonna want something a little bit better. Still, you can absolutely start by buying one of those big multi-packs of very cheap brushes. That's how I started, and it got me by just fine in the beginning. Now that I have gone to the more expensive brushes, I honestly have a hard time imagining going back to that, but it is one of those things that it's not like I recommend newcomers to spend 15 to $20 on a brush. So I don't have a super clear recommendation on this one. I think start cheap and maybe try working your way up as you become more invested in the hobby. If you do end up getting some of these more expensive Sable Kalinsky brushes or something like that, make sure you do your research on proper brush care as well so you can make them last. Oh, and speaking of brush care, I am really excited to show you guys this awesome little hack. I don't know where I saw this. It was probably on the mini painting subreddit or something like that. But let's say you are you know, using your brush, you're cleaning it out, 
and you tap it, what are you supposed to do with this thing? Well, the idea is you don't want to just put it back in a container like this because there's probably still a little bit of painty water in that thing and that is going to be settling down in this part of the brush and you do not want that. It will gunk up your brush. So instead, what I did is I made an insulation noodle paint dryer thing. You can get one of those swimming noodles or something like that. But uh, what I did is I went to the hardware store. I bought a piece of pipe insulation for about $2 that was about 10 times this long. I cut a small piece off of it and I put some slits in it and I uh, just kind of glued it up on my wall by my acoustic paneling there. I uh, put a piece of foam insulation behind it to kind of make it butt out a little bit. And now instead of trying to figure out what to do with my brushes to let them dry properly, I put them in here. So that works really well and was very, very cheap. So thanks to whoever showed me that. I don't remember who it was. All right, so we've talked about paint and brushes and those are really the two main things to consider other than miniatures, which we won't be covering in this video. Next, we're gonna talk about some other accessories. The first obvious thing is you need to keep some clean water handy to wash your brushes. I usually keep a couple jars of water. Now I recently did spend a bit more money I can't remember how much this was, maybe 15 bucks or something on this thing right here. It's kind of nice, but I don't know if I would necessarily recommend it. The nice thing is you can put this lid on it so it doesn't evaporate and uh, it does have some texture in the bottom, which can be nice for uh, washing out your brushes and kind of rubbing it along that washboard at the bottom. Um, it also does have two separate compartments if you want to use that. You could have one for metallics and one for regular paints, for example. That's something some people recommend, uh, but overall, Honestly, it's not a big game changer, and I don't think it's really uh, that big a deal to just use a jar of water. So, is it worth it? Eh, up to you. You can probably make that decision on your own. It also, by the way, does have these little things here, so you can put a brush to dry uh, down like this. Now, I don't like doing that because I often found that I was scraping the bristles as I was trying to put them in here. And uh, anyway, I think my homemade hack is better for that purpose. Another thing you might want to consider is palettes. So for a long time, I just used like a, a regular old dinner plate that had chipped and that was great. Uh, you could use an old tile. There's lots of uh, surfaces that would be good. You can buy very cheap little palettes like this for like, you know, probably less than five bucks. And uh, yes, it looks absolutely gross and dirty, but after a while I just start kind of picking at it like this and it's really, addicting and nobody gets me like you picking palette but some people really like wet palettes and i am one of those people so i started with a solution a little bit like this here's how you can make your own wet palette you can use a tupperware container i would recommend one probably a little bit bigger than this but this sandwich container here would work i have a paper towel on the bottom i just kind of dump some water on here and get it nice and moist and then you can actually get a piece of parchment paper and put that on top as well and put your paint on that and it keeps it wet for a long time. Now it does water down your paint a little bit so you gotta be careful and that's one reason some people don't like wet palettes. So your paint won't dry out so fast. You know, if I put it on this, I find my paint's not even gonna last 10 minutes in general, but on this thing, it can actually last like weeks, especially if you put the lid back on it like that. So you can use any old container around the house for that purpose, but they do make wet palettes like this. And I think this one cost me somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 or 15 bucks. So quite affordable. And uh, it's just got a sponge on the bottom here. Uh, it's a little bit gross these days and a piece of parchment paper. And it keeps my paint nice and wet for a long time. I put this paint right here on there last night and yeah, still plenty wet after 24 hours. So given that this was only 10 or 15 bucks, I decided to give it a shot. And I do like it a little bit better than just using a Tupperware container. It's a tool that's specifically designed to be a wet palette and it's very affordable. Something else I highly recommend when you are painting miniatures is some sort of handle. It's just really hard uh, to paint when your thumbs are getting in the way and you're you know, smudging your paint and all that stuff. So having some kind of holder is really important for me. It's something I very heavily rely on and I have a hard time painting without it nowadays. For me, I just use a pill bottle 
with a bit of blue poster putty on the top here. And I just push that right in there. The blue stuff I've found is a bit stickier. And um, this is very, very, uh, it'll, it'll hold it really, really well. I can pull it up by this and it's, it's not coming off of there. Um, I can you know, shake it upside down. I can press pretty hard on it. And um, yeah, that thing's not budging at all. So a pill bottle is a great solution for that. I have seen people use blocks of wood. I have actually used wine corks as well with a little poster putty on top. You can even use an old craft paint bottle. There are so many different options, but I do recommend finding some kind of holder. Now, on that note of is it worth it, they do make holders that are specifically designed for this. And I actually tried one out at my local hobby shop and I just didn't notice enough of a difference that really would make it worth spending the 10 or 15 bucks that those things cost, maybe 20, I'm not sure. But Citadel makes one I know and I'll put some links to those things down in the video description. But for me, you know, if you have something like this around the house, I would say don't bother spending money on those official paint holders. I can't speak to it too much because I haven't used one at length, so maybe some of you swear by those, but for me, these are fine. One last thing to talk about here is paint storage. You can end up spending a lot on fancy official paint storage units and you know, there's some uh, toolkits and some, some painting desks that I'm insanely jealous of. Don't get me wrong, but for me, I just wanted to keep it cheap. So I went with these nail polish racks. I heard about them on Dr. Faust's Painting Clinic, which is one of my favorite painting channels. And um, they were, I think, $13 to $15 each. So I will put a link to these in the video description. They're extremely easy to assemble. They come in three parts and they're clear acrylic. He painted his black. I've just kept mine clear, and I just bought a second one to expand my storage, and so they're, they're looking a little empty. I need to go shopping and get some more paint. Uh, they fit Citadel paints just fine, as well as Vallejo and lots of other options. So they do the job quite nicely. I definitely thought about getting some wall-mounted ones, but of course I've got all that acoustic foam there. And I just like the portability of these, that I can carry them upstairs and I can paint at the kitchen table with my kids or do whatever I wanna do with them. So everyone's needs are different, but these meet my needs really well, and they were about $10 cheaper each than the next closest paint racks I could find, and they actually hold more paint too. So that's gonna do it for my list of items, but I would love to hear from you. Do you agree or disagree with my verdict on some of these items? And what are some of those cheap hacks that you really like? And what are some of those things you think are just stupidly overpriced and no one should buy? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this one, everybody. I wanna thank my patrons so much for their support of my channel. Patrons are people who support WASD20 on a monthly basis. They also get some pretty cool rewards. So if you like what I'm doing here and you wanna support it, go check out patreon.com slash WASD20. All right, that's all for this one, everybody. Take care, you'll see me again very soon.